But um, first of all, can we say for certain this hour whether or not Russian troops have actually crossed the border and entered Ukraine? No, we can't say that for certain. The Ukrainian authorities say that they can't confirm it. And actually, the Russian foreign ministry said that it was not sending troops into eastern Ukraine yet. This after Vladimir Putin signed the document with Russia recognizing the independence of the so-called Donetsk People's Republic and Luhansk People's Republic, which had a clause in it clearly stating that Russian troops would be sent in in what they call a peacekeeping mission. This this is typical Russian behavior, really. We've seen this before. They appear to make it clear that they're about to do something, and then they sort of say that they're not doing it and try to confuse Western observers and Western politicians who are trying to decide on what kind of packages of sanctions to apply and to agree between each other about that. There have been a lot of videos of military equipment and vehicles moving around in those territories, but we can't say for sure whether that is newly arrived equipment or just Russian equipment that was already there. Because remember, covertly, Russian military hardware, Russian military personnel have been in those areas of the Donbass for eight years now, since 2014. And meanwhile, Gulliver, some diplomacy is still going on. European leaders rallying around Ukraine to an extent. I mean, President Zelensky met his Estonian counterpart a bit earlier on today. Tell us a bit about what they discussed. Well, Estonia and all of the Baltic states are among Ukraine's staunchest supporters. They are the ones calling hard for EU sanctions. And so the Estonian president in Kiev did not disappoint. But what Ukraine is looking more towards is how is Germany going to react, how are countries like Italy are going to react, Hungary, which, uh, whose prime minister has pretty warm relations with Vladimir Putin, Viktor Orban. Um, apparently, Volodymyr Zelensky spoke um, not long ago to Viktor Orban, who has said that he is on board with whatever EU sanctions package they do decide uh, to apply. And big news today, of course, was that Olaf Scholz, the German chancellor, announced that the um, approval process for the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to go into operation was suspended for as long as Russia recognizes those independent statelets in the Donbass region. And although technically that's a temporary suspension, it seems very unlikely that Vladimir Putin is going to go back on this decision. So it basically means that Nord Stream 2 is not going to be certified. That's something that Ukraine had been asking for for a very, very long time, because Ukraine has always seen this pipeline as essentially a geopolitical project by Russia to deprive Ukraine of gas transit revenues and to uh, deprive uh, Ukraine of its gas transit network, which Ukraine saw as a sort of guarantee against Russian military aggression because Russia was using these pipelines, of course, to transport its gas to Europe. So that is something, that's a decision that's seen as very good news here in Ukraine. Gulliver Krag in Kiev, thanks very much indeed.